right, so this is Griffith's uh, introduction to electrodynamics, problem 2.1. There are four parts to this problem. <coughs> uh, part A, 12 equal charges, uh, small q, are situated at the corners of a regular 12-sided polygon. For instance, one on each numeral of a clock face. What is the net force on a test charge, q, big Q, at the center? So, um, I drew these out in advance. Here's 12 little dots. Um, each of these has a small uh, uh, charge, uh, small Q. And at the center, we have a uh, charge of big Q. This is our test charge. Um, so what is the net force? Um, and basically, just due to symmetry, um, the answer is zero say, well, what if there were a net force? Um, well, there's no way, you know, as long as we're here staying in two dimensions and everything's all coplanar, there's no, you know, if you were to say there is a force, well, how would you determine which direction it's pointing in? There's all these different directions are equal. So there's no preferred direction and no net force. So that's part A, that's easy. Um, part B, suppose one of the 12 small charges is removed. He says, uh, let's take this one at six o'clock. Um, what is the force on big Q? Explain your reasoning carefully. Well, um, we're going to just use the superposition principle. Um, so, Statics. It's all um, a linear um, theory, so we can just say um, that having, you know, if we were to remove this charge, that is the exact same um, scenario as if we were to add in one more charge. I'm going to draw it slightly off, but imagine this charge were placed exactly at the same point as this other charge. And this one has a charge of minus small q. So these are the exact same scenario. If you if imagine these two charges were exactly on top of each other, a plus q and a minus q, and they cancel each other out completely, um, you have the exact same scenario as if you just took this black one out. We just canceled it out by adding the opposite charge in. So, uh, what is the force on, on big Q? Um, well, if uh, this is our R, uh, just, a, just a separation vector, I guess Griffiths would use the cursive R there, um, but the force is just the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then we have our, uh, because before the force was zero, so now the force is just, uh, the force is only looking at the, at this uh, one drawn in blue here, the minus Q. And that's over this distance squared. Um, so, I mean, as far as like the direction and everything, it depends on the sign of these two charges. So maybe this minus sign may be there, may not be there, depending on. Um, you know, I I only did the magnitude here. So just based on the specifics of the problem, this it'll either be attracted or repelled from from this charge. So you can change the sign to whatever applies to that situation. But it's not really specified in the problem, so. But the, magnif the magnitude of the force will um, be this right here um, with a plus sign there. That's the magnitude. And it will either be pointed directly away from this uh, charge, so straight up at 12 o'clock, or it'll be pointed directly down uh, towards it at 6 o'clock, just depending on the sign of the two charges. So that's part A. Part B, I did my best job of drawing 13 little charges here. Um, 
it says now 13 equal charges of little q are placed at the corners of a regular 13 second polygon. What is the force on a test charge big Q again at the center? And for the exact same reason, we have zero force on this test charge. Um, again, there's symmetry to the problem. Um, and even though, you know, if you were to draw a, um, try to find one that looks like it lines up all right, you know, even if you draw a line through here and it goes directly between, that's, that's a weird line, but it goes directly between the two charges on the opposite side, you know, it's still, you know, if you were to go all crazy with it and draw, you know, projections of the force onto different lines and different things like that, um, eventually you would find that everything cancels out once again. And again, if you were to say, well, what if there is a force? Um, then the challenge is, well, which direction do you think it would point? There's no preferred direction. There's no way to, you know, as everything is perfectly symmetric here, despite how I've drawn it, if everything's perfectly symmetric, then there is no preferred direction, and um, basically all the forces do cancel out and get a zero force. And um, so the last part of the problem says if one of the 13 uh, charge little q's is removed, what is the force on big Q? And it's exactly the same as it was before. Just using the superposition principle, we would take one of these out, and well, we don't we don't take it out. Um, well, taking it out is exactly equivalent to adding in a charge of the opposite sign in exactly the same location as one of these charges. So you can either take it out and do a whole bunch of crazy trigonometry, or you can add in one. Um, charge of equal magnitude opposite sign at the same location and cancel the charge out that way um, effectively removing it and the force um, would be for the exact same reasons uh, the same thing what we've, what we've done here exactly as we talked about before so even though there's an even number of charges and in the ring of 12, or there's an odd number of charges in the ring of 13, um, it doesn't really matter. It's basically the same problem.